In this video, I'm going to quickly walk through the high level app controller experience. So this is the initial logon screen. You see I've customized the logos. So I've got Savile Tech ID department and the cloud portal. I'm going to log on as a regular user. This is all Silverlight based. And you can see this user has access to one virtual machine manager cloud, so a private cloud. And they can see three VMs, two of them are currently not running, and one Windows Azure subscription. If I was an administrator, I get a slightly different view. I can add external service providers. If I go and look, I can see add Windows Azure subscriptions, add virtual machine manager. I have this settings node where I can actually go and add those various connections. I can add my Azure subscriptions. I can go and add user roles. So I have these capabilities. But back to the user view, which is really what I want to focus on, they can see the clouds they have access to. They can hit deploy. So when they hit deploy, they can say which cloud. So if it's my on-prem, I can select one of the templates I have available and it shows me the quota I'll have left after deploying this VM. The bigger the VM, the less resources I have available to me. And I can go and do configuration, primarily what is the VM name I want. I'm going to automatically generate the actual computer name used within it. And I can hit deploy. Or I could go and actually deploy a full service. So this is going to error because notice I don't have enough quotas, so it's going to stop me doing this action. If I go and perform that same thing as an administrator, I can bypass any quotas. So now I'm going to do deploy. I'm going to select this line of business service. This is a three tier complete service and bang, it just expands out. It's going to auto configure all of those names. So I don't really have to do anything. All I have to do is set a service name and then I can hit deploy and it's going to then going to create a job and deploy all of those virtual machines. I can do the same thing to Windows Azure. I can say, well, actually I'm going to go and deploy to Windows Azure. And then I deploy a template from my Azure library. Now I can also move things around. So in my library, I actually have some, for example, some templates. And I can actually say I want to deploy this template. And for my cloud, I only have my on-prem. The reason is that template is actually based around VHDX files. If I select one that's actually VHD based, my 2008 R2, I then see options to also select my MSDN, my Azure subscription. Same if I have existing virtual machines. If I want to migrate a VM to Azure, it's only going to work for the VHD one. So if I right click this one, and it has to be stopped and it has to be stored in the library. And I say copy, it's going to throw up a warning straight away. So copying to Azure will be completed with warnings. I mean, basically it's not going to let me. When I select Azure, it's going to say it's not possible. The reason is it's a VHDX file. Whereas if I take this one, which is using VHD files and say copy, I can select Azure and I'm deploying that from my on-prem. So I'm basically migrating a VM from on-prem to off-prem. So a, a, a nice experience there. And I can look at things through the library. I can stop and start these VMs. I could remote desktop to it. If I look at the properties, I could go and create things like checkpoints. I can create a checkpoint, apply it, delete it, all that kind of management. I can give other people access to this virtual machine that I'm the owner of. And just all up a very easy experience. So that's the very quick, uh, under five minute app controller introduction. Thank you.